Having now played every other game in the Gran Turismo series, I thought this year was finally time to tackle Taurus Trophy. Taurus Trophy was released by Polyphony Digital in 2006, just a little over a year after Gran Turismo 4, and repurposes its engine to tackle a different kind of motorsport, motorcycle racing. I've been playing it over the last month and I found it completely fascinating, so I need to talk about it. This video assumes you're already familiar with how traditional Gran Turismo games are structured, and if you want a crash course to that, I recommend watching a video I made two years ago critiquing Gran Turismo 7's campaign, which does not require prior knowledge of the series. Gran Turismo's trademark license tests are back in Taurus Trophy. License tests in Gran Turismo games typically act as skill checks to access the next tier of racing events. Early events will use the National B and National A licenses, and most of the fun stuff is gated behind International B and International A licenses. Some games will even feature a super license, which is only ever used for endgame content or bragging rights. Some players will choose to complete license tests as they start encountering events that require them, and others will choose to knock them all out at the start of the game so they never become an obstacle in their progression. Taurus Trophy's four licenses are amongst the easiest I've ever played in the series, and I actually think that's doing the player a disservice here. You can easily coast through most of the license tests here with just your GT4 muscle memory, but that doesn't mean you'll have good enough feeling for how differently the motorcycle handles from a car to successfully complete a clean lap on all but the simplest tracks. There's a decent learning curve here, and I think frequent GT players will have it roughest because of all the muscle memory they'll have to unlearn in order to drive the motorcycle at an acceptable level. I've traditionally played Gran Turismo games using D-pad and face buttons, and I found it easier to swap my controls over to dual analog sticks, a control scheme I've never used before in a Gran Turismo title, to avoid falling back into habits from Gran Turismo 4. As a side note, I'd even go as far as to say that there are multiple learning curves, as each displacement tier of motorcycles you'll be asked to use throughout the campaign does take some time to get used to. In Taurus Trophy, licenses don't act as a hard gate preventing you from participating in events. Events never require any license explicitly, as all you need to participate is an eligible motorcycle for whatever the event's conditions are, and that's where Taurus Trophy really throws you a curveball. Motorcycle acquisition in this game isn't like what you're used to from Gran Turismo. Point number one, there are no credits or equivalent currency in this game. Point number two, motorcycles can be obtained either as prizes for completing an event or from completing that motorcycle's acquisition challenge. And point number three, different tiers of motorcycle acquisition challenges are gated off by license ownership. While I'm not ruling out the possibility for creative routing to let you beat the game with prize motorcycles only, license ownership acts as a soft gate to completing different tiers of events for the majority of players. You are unlikely to obtain a competitive motorcycle for the next tier of events without going through the next tier of challenges, which will be gated behind a license test. So let's talk about those challenges. Most motorcycle acquisition challenges put you in the motorcycle you're interested in and have you face off against one or more opponents on a set track for a set number of laps. Your objective is to maintain the pole position for 10 uninterrupted seconds or finish the race in first place, whichever happens first. Oh, and the entire time the game is going to be extra strict with you. If you tip over, challenge failed. If you spend just a little too much time on the grass, challenge failed. If you bump an opponent and cause them to go off course, challenge failed. I found these to be obscenely difficult, but the satisfaction you feel from improving at them and beating them is immeasurable. For example, take this challenge I completed to get the race-modified Kawasaki Ninja ZX-6R, the first racing class motorcycle I wanted to obtain for use in the Sunday Cup event. It has you do a two-lap challenge on the full Suzuka circuit layout against two opponents, and it took me somewhere around two to three hours of non-stop retries to beat a single time. This challenge felt like the most skill-testing thing I had done in the entire game to that point because of how many things a single challenge asked me to become consistent with. First, it was just getting out of the first few turns cleanly. Then it was catching up to the second-place opponent reliably by approximately mid-lap. The last 90 degree turn on the track was giving me a lot of trouble and I wasn't anywhere near overtaking the first place opponent, so I just kept retrying and retrying, pushing the aggression even harder as I got to that point in the track. Pretty soon I was overtaking the second place opponent by those early turns that I was struggling with at the very beginning, trivializing him entirely. By mid-lap I was still 4 seconds behind the first place opponent, but as I kept grinding it quickly became 3 seconds, and then 2 seconds, and then it started to seem realistic that maybe I could overtake him in the second lap, so I just had to nail that damn turn. But when I did, it all came together by the middle of the second lap, and I felt amazing. I don't know what the developer intent behind these challenges were, but more often than not, I would enter them for the first time and face a scenario that felt impossible. But as you take the time to grind it out, you quickly start to identify each of the skill testing factors at play. 
It could be the unfamiliarity with how that power tier of motorcycles controls. It could be challenging turns on a track that can be tricky to nail cleanly when entering at high speed. It could just be the tuning of your opponents and how aggressive you need to be to realistically catch up to them. You need to overcome all of those obstacles to even have a chance of beating the challenge, but it is doable if you take it one at a time, and you'll quickly feel that sense of improvement and accomplishment kicking in. I've never entered a deeper flow state with the controls of any other game in the Gran Turismo series as I have with these challenges. It's truly one of my favorite experiences I've had in the entire Gran Turismo series. When challenging motorcycles locked by the final license, these pole position challenges are swapped out for relatively challenging time trials to beat. If players have been progressing through the game tier by tier, by this point they would already have well-developed muscle memory and game sense, and the developers must not have thought that pole position challenges could sustain the same level of difficulty as a well-tuned time trial could. These took a comparable amount of time to beat to the other challenges, with most of my time spent shaving off the last second from my times. Unfortunately, I don't think they're as satisfying to grind on because of how much fewer little victories there are to celebrate as you iterate on the challenge. Having said all of that, that puts racing events in an awkward spot in Taurus Trophy. The motorcycle acquisition challenges are so demanding of perfection that they'll often take you multiple hours of retries at my skill level, but achieving that perfection also makes you skilled enough to trivialize the race that you ostensibly got that motorcycle for in the first place. None of the strictness of the acquisition challenges applies during racing events, which means you can cut corners through the grass, you can tip over and it isn't the end of the race, and you can bump into your opponents without a care in the world. Realistically, you want to avoid doing any of that, but maintaining an early lead is trivial as long as you're not racing on Autumn Ring Mini, and any mistakes you make aren't punched that heavily by the game as recovery times are incredibly short. It's better to think of challenges as the main event, and events being the victory lap for having beaten the challenge. Unlike in licenses and challenges, bikes can be tuned for actual race events, but since there's no currency, there's also nowhere to buy upgrades from. As far as I can tell, bikes always come pre-configured with stock settings, but many of the bikes come with exhaust upgrades or alternative tires you can swap between in the tuning options menu before a race. Using anything other than the basic street tires will also introduce the notion of tire wear to the game, occasionally prompting you to enter the pit for a swap mid-race. Most races are short enough for this to be completely ignorable as a mechanic, though. One last thing about the racing events that feels incredibly odd. Aside from a few unlockable end game events, there are no progression gates between racing events. If you feel like it, you can rush through all of the licenses, do one single acquisition challenge for a top of the line racing class motorcycle, and immediately enter the Taurus Trophy World Championship without entering any prior events. Off the top of my head, I can't think of any other Gran Turismo title where that's possible at all, and while I do appreciate the freedom to be able to do that at all, it does mean that strictly speaking, every other event is optional content. Having now explained the core game loop, I hope you can understand what I mean when I say Taurus Trophy is a very imbalanced experience overall. I checked online to see how people felt about Taurus Trophy's difficulty, and opinions are very polarized. On the one hand, you've got people calling it one of the hardest Gran Turismo experiences ever, and they're not wrong. In most other Gran Turismo games, you can generally find a way to cheese whatever race you're entering if you're struggling, either by buying overpowered cars, making creative use of tuning options, or cutting through corners. In Tourist Trophy, unless there's some creative pathing you can do to get by with prize motorcycles only, you will hit a difficulty wall between each class of motorcycle, and you will need to overcome it or you're effectively just stuck there. If you're not willing to put in the time and patience to overcome that wall, this game isn't for you. On the other hand, it also makes perfect sense why people consider this game to be the easiest Gran Turismo game too. Licenses and race events are trivial, and as acquisition challenges ramp up in difficulty over the course of the game, so does your growth as a player. I can totally see Tourist Trophy being the Gran Turismo analog to Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, where first-time players found it to be even more brutal than the rest of From Software's games, but repeat players found it to be a breeze because through perseverance, they grew accustomed to how the game was meant to be played, and it became second nature. As a long-time Gran Turismo player, aside from a few license tests in Gran Turismo 1 with obscene time requirements, I can't really remember the last time I felt challenged by Gran Turismo campaign unless I was under a self-imposed challenge, like the B-Spec only run of Gran Turismo 4 I did a few years back. I certainly wouldn't want every Gran Turismo game to be this demanding, and it would probably be a mainstream failure if they tried that, but Tourist Trophy did feel like an incredibly refreshing take on the Gran Turismo series formula. On paper, Taurus Trophy is such a weird game that is hard to recommend. 
I've spent two thirds of my in-game time so far in acquisition challenges, and no matter how much I ended up liking them, there's just something about that that feels wrong. If you come to the game completely blind and you have that kind of experience, you would swear there's something wrong with the game design. If you're picking up a racing game to participate in some cool races, it feels like a slap in the face for the races to feel like a side attraction. In 1986, less than a year after the release of the original Super Mario Bros., Nintendo released Super Mario Bros. 2 in Japan, labeled on the box as being for super players. Instead of making the sequel as accessible as the original was, Nintendo opted to create a sequel specifically for the subset of the audience that had mastered the original Super Mario Bros. and wanted newer, harder levels to challenge themselves with. It certainly doesn't seem like a great way to attract new players and grow the franchise, which is why a different game was released under that name internationally, with the Japanese original only making it to the West a few years later under the name Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. I can't help but see Taurus Trophy as a potentially unintentional Gran Turismo for the Lost Levels. It's a weird, super challenging take on a game that you've likely already played that will alienate anyone who dares to approach it without the prior context. But if you're the kind of sicko that this game was made for, you will experience highs and lows nothing else in the Gran Turismo series can offer.